Hey, this is Jason Burns. I am here with David of the Workday Release. David, thank you so much for making the time to chat today. Yeah, thanks for having me. I'm glad to be here. You know, I know you just released your lead single off the new album. I'm curious, does it feel like, you know, the race has sort of begun now and, and your hard work is going to sort of get out there to the people now that, you know, that first single, you've you've cleared that first hurdle? Yes, it, it, it definitely, definitely feels like I'm in the thick of like, you know, this promotional kind of cycle. So it's, uh, it's really something that I haven't really done before. You know, I've, I've largely released all my music independently. Um, and so being with a label now and thinking about how do you properly work a record and give it, you know, enough space to um, be seen and heard by uh, many people, it's a very, very different thing. For me than i've done before well, so what's um, weird is that it's very different for everybody right now given the time period because nobody's oh really yeah get out there and promote the same way right so you, you do it like this right it's like <laughs> i mean it's but we're so used to everything being so online but yeah, yeah more now than ever right it's been yeah. like this has been the thing so yeah i'm excited I, I feel like everything's kicking off and i'm tired but in a good way <laughs> well yeah. in terms of reaching people you know, can it be intimidating, especially this day and age where it seems like there's just so many albums coming out? And I don't know if that's a reflection of artists were home and quarantined and doing a lot of songwriting, but it just seems like this is a span where there's just a lot of stuff out there. And it, do you look at that and go, how do I cut through it all? Mm, yeah, I mean, that's always right. You're trying to balance that with uh not trying to care about that like mm -hmm. the, i can't i can't really think about that that's it's the label's job to think about how do we get this to a a wider audience but um you know i've had the workday release for 10 years yeah and really the last four or five have been the most satisfying because i've learned to stop thinking about that mm -hmm. because it can be it can become so overwhelming to think about how do i get to that next level how do i you know you're, you're like you're always chasing some other audience out there hoping that they'll notice you rather than really learning to enjoy and uh, appreciate the people that are already paying attention, you know? <laughs> yep. And so I think shifting, shifting how I think about those kinds of things and, and placing much more of my value in those people that are here with me right now has really drastically changed how much I, I enjoy the project. Mm -hmm. And then I can kind of let go and say like, okay, now I'm working with somebody, you know, a record label like NC, and they're focused on those things. How do we get you to a wider audience? That kind of thing. Mm. Um, but for my own sanity, I can't really think about that. I have to keep my feet on the ground and just, you know, <laughs> look the audience in the eyes that I have and be like, I'm excited to give you a new record. You know, that's, yeah. that's much more satisfying. You know, with that excitement, David, is there a piece of you that, you know, it's singer songwriter excitement, but also producer excitement because you produce this record on your own? Yeah, yeah. The, I mean, this is the first time I've done something like this. And really the first time I felt like I could do something like this after 10 years. And you know, I spent a year with a, a producer out in LA who produced a couple of my records too, just learning with him about, you know, learning with him from other producers as well, being around the language and the gear. And then to a place where feeling like, you as an artist, you're constantly having to pass what you create through the filter of someone else, right? When, you, when you're working with a producer. Um, and sometimes that gr that's great because it helps elevate certain things that you're not good at, right? To a new level, because you don't know how to speak that language of maybe we should be using this microphone or maybe we should be using this compressor or that kind of thing. Uh, but I finally got to a place where I was comfortable enough with those pieces to kind of step in and say, I don't really think I've presented the workday release yet in the way that I've, I fully feel like it needs to be mm. done. And so that was a really, really exciting part of it with NC being like, go do it. You know, Cause I was like, I can, I can do this record. Like, I can produce it myself. And they're like, go mm. do it. And I just got to hire a couple of my friends, you know, I was like, you're going to engineer it and mix it. And uh, another friend of mine mastered it, but really being in charge of every single aspect of it and thinking really deeply about okay, what does it need to feel like? What does it need to sound like? You know, what, what are those um, kind of like, you know, those targets that I've been aiming for for a long time, but have maybe never quite hit because I didn't know how to personally mm. lead the charge, you know? Mm -hmm. So yeah, it's, and it's, sometimes you can hear that in your mind, but you can't always articulate. Yeah, it, right? yeah and else. that's, that's like the magic of music. It's yep. an it's intangible. So you, you yep. don't know, you're like trying to craft something that you can't really see. Yeah. So it's different. Yeah. You know, did producer David ever butt heads with singer songwriter David in the studio in terms of what you could achieve and what one wanted. 
That's a good question. I think I think producer David would be frustrated with musician David about performance takes. Really, that's what it is, right? It's like they're they're pretty on the same page about what the vision of the music should be like and all that. But it's like wrap it up, buddy. It's time to go. You know that that, that kind of thing. But honestly, like there wasn't even much of that. I. I've gotten to a place now where I'm pretty comfortable with, okay, it's this many takes. And I, and I, I mean, I write the songs myself. I know the songs really well, mm -hmm. um, but guitar has always been a frustrating instrument for me, even though I've played for 10 years, um, I'm very comfortable on piano mm -hmm. and guitar has just always been this thing. I think I just don't have the drive to play every day, you know, the way that some people do. Mm -hmm. I mean, I play piano almost every single day. Um, but guitar is just, it, it's not, it's more like another instrument I go to in case I'm getting writer's block on piano. So it's just another thing I can go to and be like, okay, maybe I'll write a song over here and I'll get something different. Um, but I don't have that drive to play every day. So I think because of that, like weeks and or even months will go by without me playing. And then I pick it up and my fingers hurt like a beginner, you know? And so I do, I do remember when we were recording some of the songs, I just couldn't, I couldn't do another take because my, my fingers would not hold down the, the chords any longer, you know, wow, um, is a really bizarre thing. Somebody who's like, I'm kind of a professional if I think about it, you know, <laughs> but like, I just can't. Yeah. So there's something about guitar that I've always tripped over it. So that was kind of funny. <laughs> so, so is that, does that mean that the piano is your go-to like sort of intro in instrument to a song? That's where you start writing. It's, it's where I feel the most, um, it's where I feel the most inspiration. Like, like it's kind of a place, not even for songwriting, but I can just sit down. I mean, I'm sitting at the piano right here. It's mm -hmm. like right in front of me and I look out the window, you know, and it's just a place where I can sit and play two or three notes and I feel like an inner peace, you know? Mm -hmm. So whatever that is, like, it's my inspirational instrument. There's definitely songs where I just go straight to guitar first and be like, this, this is the, this is the thing of the song. So I should go to guitar. Mm -hmm. um, Cause I definitely get, I, I get different um, outcomes w with each instrument, you know? mm. um, but yeah, piano is my favorite. And then guitar is like a necessary evil. <laughs> <laughs> is the piano also sort of like a security blanket in that, you know, you have a bad day, you come in, you're not even writing a song, but you just pound on the keys for a little while and suddenly exactly. you feel better. Yes. And I wouldn't say so much pound as like gently, like, you know, <laughs> uh, meditate, you know, mm -hmm. like that's, that's more, it's not because um, I do play drums too. So I yeah. definitely having, remember days you know feeling frustrated and the drum set is like a place to just let out aggression mm -hmm. uh and then piano yeah is much more like it's like sorting out my mind you know and in a similar way i was telling my friends or you know this that i have this like really meditative experience when i do dishes and i don't have a dishwasher here yep. and there's something about doing that kind of work where your brain starts to work through things that you might be thinking of or and then by the end you just feel a little bit more sorted you yeah. know, it's so interesting. Well, and I uh, think that's a reflection of where we are as a society because it's always go, 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 go. That when yeah. you can't stop and just slow down, you're like, oh, look at that. I got stuff going on yeah. in here I can think about. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I didn't look at my phone for a full 30 minutes and did some dishes. Now I feel a little bit better. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so, David, when you look at the album now, there's, a, you know, a bit of time between when you called rap and, and where we are today. You know, yeah. what are you most proud of both as you know, musician, singer, songwriter, David, and as producer, David, like, and do they converge? Are they the same thing? Yeah, de definitely. I think these are the first songs uh, where after 10, over 10 years of writing music for the Workday release, I felt like I heard the Workday release. Mm. You know, I, I felt like I finally, I was like, that's it. That's what I've been trying to do. Um, because I think the struggle with other producers coming in has been that I have a pop voice. Right. So I have a pop voice. I have a little bit of a pop punk background, you know, that that was like when I grew up doing music. And so most producers felt the need to to lean into the band thing more mm -hmm. so than I really wanted to. Um, like I've I've kind of wanted to go the more folk, you know, vibey kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And I think other people just didn't hear that. And so it was like this really weird um, balance of being like, how do you present this music, which is singer songwriter, and it has a, you know, a main instrument at the heart of it, either piano or guitar. And then there should be percussion, but it's not really a drum kit, right? And it's not like um, electronic music where maybe it's like, you know, these uh, electronic kicks and snares and things. Um, and so finding that balance was really, really difficult because making the song interesting and full 
but still simple and intimate, you know, like those were, those like a really hard balance to, mm. to do. So it really felt like the only way for that to happen was with me producing. And so I think when I hear this record, I'm really proud that it has a very uh, consistent through line. I, I think all the songs are very different. I'm very proud of that, that every song is kind of its own thing, mm -hmm. uh, but it definitely feels like it came from one person, which is, which is honestly, I'm proud of that because it's rare nowadays, like, yeah. especially with, with a pop record. If you go and click the credits, you're going to see five or six writers per song. Um, but I'm, I'm very proud that when you go on Spotify and click the credits with through these 11 songs, you're going to see one producer and one, one writer. So uh, yeah, uh, that's something I'm really proud of. Well, and what's, you know, I always talk about this with musicians nowadays is that, you know, we seem to be getting back to like early, pop rock you know singles vibes where everybody's releasing singles and not full albums but this like you said this feels like a full album this feels like a front to back you know yes they're all unique and different in their own way but they belong together at the same time yes and that was really important to me i, I i'm getting asked this question quite a bit in the world of singles why an album you mm -hmm. know and i was like well part of that is the the first thing is that that's how i like to listen to music i want i don't always get it because it's pretty hard you know to, to find it but I want that record that has that I can hear a songwriter sitting down at a main instrument and then um, and, you know, there's I don't have to skip a track like I want to listen from one yeah. to nine or one to twelve. And then, of course, off that first listen, you're going to have two songs or whatever that you're going to be like, oh, those are the best songs on the record. Mm -hmm. And then you keep spending time with it. And you're like, how did I never notice that song? Mm -hmm. You know, track six, like those lyrics in the second verse are hitting me so hard this week. And you start spending more and more time in it. And it feels like it can kind of start to reflect a, a, like a season of life because you spend so much time in an album. And so I had been doing a lot of single releases and I, I was like, well, maybe if I like, if that's the way I like to listen to music the most, maybe that's the best way for me to release music, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, just well, a, and it doesn't remove the singles from it. You can still release singles. Yeah, and, and that, yes, and that was the label's focus of like, okay, let's still do singles. Like we mm -hmm. we want those cycles to kind of build awareness around the record, you know, so that mm -hmm. people can get a chance. Um, but at the end of the day, I'm really excited to be delivering a full album. And I wrote, you know, a letter, like a a long format letter to my audience that's been with me through everything. And I just said. You know, I really hope that your first time when this record comes out, you go away somewhere, you know, if it's in your car or somewhere quiet alone or with somebody that you care about um, and just listen to the record from start to finish, because I think that's how I'm, I've created the record. I've created it for that experience. So if you want to experience it the way that the artist wants you to experience it, go do that. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Yeah. You know, well, finally, David, we talked a lot about the process of putting this record together. I'm curious, you know, playing the sort of idea of the butterfly effect. How is this going to ripple into your creative, you know, production in the future? Do you think you're going to stay producer moving forward? Is this the process that, that the work they release will be on from now on? Yeah, so I have, uh, I don't know if you know this, but I have two projects, one that's newer called Closer, and that's mm -hmm. going to be this like pop atmospheric thing um, that I'm co-producing with uh, a guy who actually did like the um, additional production on this record. So mm -hmm. like all the instrumentation and stuff I worked on with one guy, right? He's out in Montana, his name's Solo Ray. Mm -hmm. uh, and he's helping me co-produce this other project called Closer. So I definitely see... Um, chances to do both right I, I think the work they release will it's kind of been my my sole you know solo project thing to be a control freak over you know because mm -hmm. like, i just want i want the work they release to be like the truest expression of me yeah. in, in that space yep. um and so i yes i do think that i will continue to to be the only producer for that but i definitely see benefits of producing with and or having other people produce other kinds of things where with this new project closer it's very energetic kind of weird you know some of the songs are like a little weird pop um, atmospheric kind of thing and I need somebody to be like hey why don't we try this instead of this and I'm like oh I would have never thought of that mm -hmm. so I can definitely do both I just think that with the work to release that's kind of my own thing so um, I'll do that yeah well David what's the best way for people to connect with you and the album and just sort of all the projects in the future what's the what's the in, best uh, approach next my personal phone number at <laughs> uh, uh yeah follow me on Instagram uh the workday release and then on Twitter uh it's at d a t s e t t o d i v a d it's my full name backwards and it's so right. that was impressive <laughs> right and it's like I had to do it in my head uh, and or on the the label's website ncmusic.com yep awesome David, thank you so much for making the time today. I appreciate you giving us some of your yeah. afternoon.
Thanks so much for having me. I really appreciate it. Awesome. Thanks, David.